given what's going on globally with the with the movement of people all over the globe it's time to start thinking beyond our traditional boundaries and and really thinking creatively about what we can do as communities of color so the implications are global and it's very rare that you come across a program that has that kind of scale or scope there's no question that hip is the leading organization in doing that work hip is a network of funders that are committed to increasing investments in Latino communities. My hope is that HIP becomes an agenda setter portraying Latinos as the givers that we are. Esperanza del Barrio is a community-based organization that was started three years ago by Mexican women. The city had in the statute, a provision that said that in order to apply for a vending license, a person had to show their immigration status that they were either a citizen or a legal permanent resident. So that they learn about um, community organizing, political education, basic skills to talk to politicians, and we also have our legal clinic. Sí, la verdad, a mí me ha llenado mucho de orgullo de estar en esta organización porque he aprendido bastante a desenvolverme delante de la gente. In the coalitions that we've been, one can develop more, and for me, that is the hope of the barrio. The Latino Center is a non-profit organization that was founded in 1999, and uh, our mission is to improve the health of the Latino community through education. The main program is a leadership program. It's really kind of uh, crossing the bridge between two cultures. Teatro Vision was first organized in 1984. And then we uh, were uh, asked by the Mexican Heritage Corporation to consider being a resident company here at the Plaza. And we're one of the very few Latino theater companies in the country that perform a full season on a main stage. There's some implications behind that. If we can get our community to come in and fill this theater, then other regional companies will say we should do more Latino plays and we can really have an impact nationally if we can do this thing. Tengo mango. HIP as an organization is really at the forefront of so many issues, um, not only in the U.S., but now branching out to Latin America. They really are redefining philanthropy. The person that works as a waiter here that perhaps makes, you know, $1,500 a month and that is sending home $400 is a giver, is a philanthropist of the best kind. What can philanthropy do? Not what can that giver do for philanthropy, but what can philanthropy do to, number one, recognize and honor that, number two, leverage, and number three, support. That is what, you know, organized philanthropy should be doing. It really is groundbreaking. And there's a lot of potential for that model to not only be developed throughout Latin America, but even to think about that for other countries and how other um, migrant groups can think about channeling the flow of philanthropic dollars across borders. You know, philanthropy is not defined by a tax code in the United States. Philanthropy is de defined by the fact that we as individuals understand that my future and my children's future lies with yours. Strengthening Latino communities and strengthening the capacity of Latino leaders can only help that inclusiveness, which I believe strengthens everybody.